said in my uh, last vlog that I was going to do a video montage. Well, I think I'm just going to do the garden tour. So, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff here. And we've already harvested quite a bit. There's the run. There's the pen. There's my roosters. Laundry drying. Alright, so... As you come to the garden, this is where our gate's going to be. We've started fencing, and uh, you know, we're, we're working on it as we can. Home setting is expensive. Don't let anyone fool you. So these are the gardens that we started with to begin with. We had, um, let's see, we had this one here, which has our rhubarb and, and uh, some our first planting of asparagus, some sage, stuff like that. Um, a little bit of garlic, some walking onions. Then we had this garden last year, which I don't remember what we had planted in there. I think it was tomatoes. This year I did garlic, and uh, I harvested that. We had a good harvest, and I'll uh, put some pictures in here somewhere, maybe right here. <laughs> then we have this bed which this year we did strawberries and yellow onions in and last year it was tomatoes same with this bed that's all strawberries and uh, we did yellow onions in that one as well they're companion plants this bed also had snow peas in it and it developed its own uh, tomato <laughs> we call those volunteers here. I don't know about everywhere, but here they're tomato uh, volunteers when they come up on their own from seeds from last year, and it's just from the compost. Um, after those snow peas finished, we planted another row after we had harvested potatoes from that row there. So we're still in the garden beds that we had originally planted uh, the first year that we got here. Uh, the first year we did potatoes in this bed. This year, and you can see we've already dug them up from this year, this year we added four more beds, and we still have more to dig up, so more harvesting to come. All right, and then this year, new things that we've started. This, um, we put a frame around it. Last year it didn't have a frame. This year we put a frame, and uh, we put in asparagus and carrots. I've got lots of carrots going on in here and last year it had chard so this mess right here this is all chard that's gone to seed so I'm gonna save a lot of chard seed and I'm sure a lot's just gonna come up on its own then this is our second asparagus bed when you're homesteading and you know that there are certain things you want that first year that you need to get planted your perennial gardens should be the first thing on your list um, because it takes several years for them to come to maturity. So this year we were not able to harvest any of this asparagus. We wanted all the, the energy to go into the roots. So the best way to do it is to just let it go. Let it do what it's going to do. And it, it, it's really beautiful. Um, I, I think it's beautiful. So. In the first year it's okay to plant stuff with it and um, we did carrots and radishes and things like that so that's what's going on in this garden bed this was the potato bed that we now have our second planting of snow peas um, we're hopeful that we're going to actually get a good crop because it's doing really well I planted them in the first week of July or August no it was July first or second week of July I, uh, I planted these snow peas. So they're doing really well. They're flowering now and they're climbing. Um, radish, uh, not radish, turnip greens next to them. They came up on their own because we had turnips everywhere over here. So we're going to use those for greens. All right, so this starts a new bed as well. Last year we didn't have anything planted here or out there. None of that. All of that is new. So this year, this was my brassica bed, and I did a lot of companion planting. This was broccoli. My broccoli, as you can see, I have been harvesting away all summer. It's, it's done great. I've never grown broccoli so well. Some I even have just let go to, to seed and flower for the bees. 
Um, that's a uh, parsley. This is a uh, pe um, pineapple sage. I had uh, cabbages in these holes, and you can see it split. I don't know what caused that. I believe it's from rain because we have had a very dry season, and then all of a sudden we had a lot of rain. So um, that one has split. That one has not, and I'm going to pick that one soon and make something with it. That is um, basil, and at the moment it escapes me what kind. Um, I want to say it's Greek basil. I believe it is. Dill. More broccoli plants. Looks like I need to harvest some more. Brussels sprouts. Only a few. I've got five Brussels sprout plants in here, and I don't know if you can see, but they're doing awesome. Really excited. Uh, and some more broccoli. Over here, this was our cold frame last winter, and uh, I let the stuff go to seed. As you can see, there's lots of pars not parsley, um, more, oh, what is that called? <laughs> Turnip greens, chard, there was spinach. I think it's gone to seed, too. It's all just going to reseed itself in here. It's kind of overgrown. We're going to have to clean it up soon, but um, yeah, it did great. Uh, okay, so then this next bed, <laughs> I'll try and put a picture in over here somewhere of what this looked like when I planted it uh, in June. These are our watermelon and uh, cantaloupe patch. And it just went crazy, of course, as you can see. There's a watermelon. I got a... a Third, almost a 30 pound watermelon and I didn't realize it but I had planted yellow watermelons as well as the sugar babies and so I've got some sugar babies and a yellow watermelon and you probably can't see them they're over there hiding but there's a few more there's 10 cantaloupes that are growing this is the best I've ever done with melons I've tried cantaloupes for years on the Cape and could never grow them I just don't think it got hot enough so this summer was bumper crop for for me because I've never been able to get them to maturity so it, it's great I'm really excited about that um, more volunteer tomatoes lots of them don't think they're gonna have time to produce anything but it's pretty nice that they came up on their own they're beautiful they're kind of in my way <laughs> um, all right so this was originally gonna be another um, bed for this winter, but we're going to use that spot right there for our cold frames, and we're going to build them. We're not going to use the cinder blocks So, again. this bed has the rest of the brassicas that I planted. Well, the first batch of brassicas that I planted. I did it in two spots. Try to, you know, be able to, um, I'll be able to do it for I guess two or three years, brassicas can go in the same place and then you have to rotate them. But I think I'm planning on rotating uh, anyway because I'm not really planning on getting seeds from all of this. Uh, I'll get what I can get this year, but I didn't plant any kale in this bed, so I'm not real concerned about not having to pull everything up. So this was more broccoli, and again, it's... It's done really well for me. I did companion plant, that's some more pineapple sage. And then over here is my second herb garden, which has some bee balm, some stevia. That is, um, uh, words come to me. Mm -hmm. Rosemary, that is spearmint which may be a mistake, but yes, it's in the ground. <laughs> it's in a raised bed, but yeah, it's in the ground. Um, that's my lemon balm, and then that is some more pineapple sage. And I don't know, you probably can't tell, but I have harvested it all multiple times, and it's just going so strong. It's doing great. And then, newest addition is, <laughs> that's our outdoor shower really excited about the outdoor shower. Um, it is solar heated, so the water goes into those pipes, the sun beats down on them, 
and uh, by around 1, 12 or 1, depending on how much sun we've had that morning, it's ready. You're ready for a shower. So um, the showers last about 5 minutes um, of good, nice hot water. Um, and as the season, the days get shorter, the showers get a little bit shorter too because it doesn't have as much time to heat up the water. But we love it and um, it's, it's been great. Still no indoor hot running water, so this has been my favorite so thing so far this summer. So as we tractored the turkeys and meat birds around the yard this summer, they left us some beautiful surprises. We didn't have time to plant or make garden beds for sunflowers, and had we known it was as easy as just throwing the seeds on the ground and leaving them there, we probably would have done that. <laughs> but as it was, the, the chickens decided they were going to do it for us, and uh, they just left seeds, and this is what happened. We got, like, several patches of gorgeous sunflowers. So as they come to an end, like those are the first ones to bloom and they're starting to droop and, and uh, the petals will be all falling off. I will cut those heads off and dry them out and uh, we'll save the whole seed head for the chickens and just throw them in during the winter. But yeah, we were, we were really surprised. We didn't think we were going to have any, any sunflowers this year, but that was nice. Nice of the chickens to plant things for us all by themselves. See, chickens are helpful. Okay, so um, we went through all of these garden beds. Yeah, all right, so now we'll talk about my tomatoes. Now, I had planned on having two or three rows of tomatoes. I had started them all. There's another volunteer. Um, and what I got was one row of tomatoes. And they're doing good. I'm actually starting to get some nice tomatoes on them. As you can see, I did companion planting. I got my marigolds in. They're French marigolds. That's why they're so small. First year growing those. Um, basil, parsley, all kinds of great things that are supposed to help keep the bad buggies away. Well, you probably can't tell so much now unless you look at these and see. But we were decimated by a group of about, oh, 50 horn, hornworm, tomato hornworms. So yeah, that's why they look so sparse. But um, I saved as much as I could. There are a lot of tomatoes that are, that are ripening now, and I'm very excited about that because I will be able to do some salsa. Um, this year, oh, there's my eggplant. Can you see it? Yeah. <laughs> and my peppers did crap this year. It was so hot, I thought they would do great. No. Those are supposed to be uh, cayenne. Long. Not so much. This was the first year, and I did plant these from seed. These are uh, tomato borghesis. They're supposed to be the sun-dried tomatoes. And supposedly, you leave them on and let them vine dry in the sun. Well, that's not working out so much. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. There's some black starting to happen on them where they've split. And now, I don't know if they split because of the lack of rain and then lots of rain. Because I water, you know, several times a day. And I have two. You know, in my row, I, I planted two of these plants, so I don't know. I guess maybe I need to search out some videos on YouTube and see what the heck I need to do for that. But anyway, um, could be a failed experiment. I don't know. Maybe it'll tell me I need to pick them and dry them. If any of you know, please leave a comment below. I, I really don't know. Um, okay, so let's see. Some more basil. I planted cinnamon basil as well. And uh, another um, pepper plants. Mm. Oh, carrots. In case you didn't know, carrots go good with tomatoes. So I got some carrots in. My mom planted those when she was here her first trip in July. And then I've got my plum tomatoes. Now I have three plum tomato plants. 
I also planted some uh, green tomatoes or tomatillos. So I wanted to try and make some piccalilli and tomatillo salsa and things like that. But yeah, they're, they're not looking that great. Uh, well, the plum tomatoes, there are plenty on there. They're ripening, but they didn't get very big. This one, this is an Amish paste tomato and they've gotten really big. They're doing great. They're just taking a really long time to ripen. Don't know what's up with that either. But all right, so that's the tomato. Bed. Now we come to my second planting of brassicas. So um, I bought these plants because I did not, I was not able to start them from seed. If I had planned better, I would have. But I bought a six pack, which turned out to be seven uh, cabbages. This was in June. I did not plant them until August. They were teeny tiny little things, and then as soon as I planted them, they kind of exploded. So I'm gonna have a second batch of cabbages, which I'm really excited about. I did start the kale from seed. Same thing, didn't plant it till June, started it in, I don't know, February. <laughs> I kept everything alive, I was able to do that. But um, yeah, this is what happens when you're lazy and, well, not lazy, just, didn't get all your beds planted in time. So there's my kale. I have two plants. We've already harvested a lot off of those. They've done amazing. These are things that I started from seed. They are a surprise. We don't know what they are going to be. I, I don't know what they are. I really don't. I, they might be broccoli. I'm thinking maybe broccoli, but they're not as dark green as these broccoli. These are broccoli. One, two, three. These are four broccoli plants. So this is my second planting of broccoli. Um, and then I've got a good start on two more long beds that were going to be tomatoes and more brassicas, but as you can see, they didn't get finished, but they will be. They will be, and they'll be ready for 